So this is going to be a breakdown of my second New York Times assignment. My first one, if you guys can remember, was back in April. And these two are a lot different. The first one was a one-time deal, just going and photographing some damage from a tornado. It was all in digital. I uploaded it that night, and it ended up not being published. The second one is a lot different. It's a much longer story, a lot of people involved, a lot of moving parts, very complex, and it happened over many months. So I thought it was a little bit different. Going to go over everything from the first email to it being published and just give you a breakdown of everything involved. So this specific assignment starts on May 1st and the editor actually reached out to me to do a assignment for that night and it was essentially a roundtable discussion. And if you guys don't know the story of this specific report, I'll link it down below so you can read it. But the gist of it is this woman worked at a trans clinic in St. Louis. Her name is Jamie Reed. She noticed that, in her opinion, some people were being mistreated. They were being overwhelmed with patients. So she decided to blow the whistle on this clinic and let everyone know that she thought people were being uh, mishandled and mistreated. A lot of people agreed with her. A lot of people, including parents and children who were treated there in the past, didn't agree with her. But this article kind of sums all that up and um, puts it under an umbrella and gives the pros and cons of this specific clinic. Now, that night on May 1st, I was to go with the reporter to a roundtable discussion and the first half of this discussion was going to be an off-the-record talk to the reporter about how the New York Times has handled trans issues in the past. And I was to not photograph that, and we were just supposed to listen. So that was the first half, and the second half was an open discussion about the actual report and the story. And going into this, a lot of people ask me if I use 4x5 or if I use film or digital. And going into this discussion, I was going to use digital because I didn't know where I was going to be. I didn't know what the lighting situation was going to be. I just knew people were going to be sitting at a table. So I brought my digital camera and I brought an 85 millimeter lens because I imagined I would be further away from people. But I ended up getting there and we ended up talking for three hours and I didn't move around once. I sat in the same seat for the entire discussion. I didn't want to get in front of people and be intrusive or anything like that. I just wanted to listen and kind of hear what they were saying and talking about because there was a lot of parents there and a lot of children who went to the clinic and I just wanted to hear their stories and not be the photographer snapping photos in front of their face the whole time. So I'm not showing any of those pictures because I ended up deleting them all because they all sucked. But it was essentially just the same angle, a long lens and photos of people talking and doing this and kind of just looking concerned. So another question I get a lot is how I get the subjects to photograph and if there's any direction from the editor or the New York Times on how to take the photos. And for this, the editor just wanted me to do my own thing. They hired me because they like my work and my portraits. So he said I could use 4x5. It was going to be a long story and time was not really of the essence. So I was free to use film and I wouldn't be rushed to have to send it out that night or the next day, even though I did develop and process everything at home. So I did get it out in a pretty uh, quick turnaround. But for something like this, you have many weeks. And for this, from May to August, to make all the work. And the first person that I photographed that he gave me the contact information for was the whistleblower, Jamie Reed. That was on May 9th, and when I met her, it was at her house, just like 10 minutes away from my house, which is pretty nice. But I took my 4x5. I was going to shoot all this on Portrait 160 just to keep it consistent. And when I got there, it was super cloudy. 
Um, super hot, very humid, and we started outside. And I just took some photos in front of her house. Like I said, it was cloudy, so the colors were pretty muted and the light was pretty muted, which I usually like. But for something like this, I would have liked a little bit more light to make it a little bit more dynamic and dramatic. But I was sweating my ass off essentially. And when I actually got into her office to take one more photo, I was embarrassed to ask this, but I had sweat running down my back into my crack and I actually had to ask her for a paper towel. So maybe subconsciously that was like me trying to uh, break the ice and let her guard down a little bit by handing me a paper towel to wipe sweat off. But she laughed, I laughed, it was a good moment. And I ended up taking a couple more in her office. I liked this one the most. I don't know why, it just fits my type of mood and style. But they ended up using this photo that I took on digital. And I don't really like it um, color-wise and how I edited everything. But I do like how you can see more of the office in the back as well as the cross on the wall just adds a little bit more to the portrait but after I sent these photos off many months went by around two months with went by before I heard anything else about the story and that was just the reporter and the editors working on the story dialing it and um, going over rough drafts things of that nature and also when they're working on the story like that, the editor is also trying to figure out who the subjects are going to be for the photos in the future. And it turns out that the next person to photograph was a girl by the name of Katie. And she was a therapist that worked at St. Louis University. So I met up with her and the first photo that I took was in her office. And one thing you're going to notice with these portraits and something that I probably need to work on in the future, um, the portraits just don't look very fluid in my mind. And I think that kind of goes back to when I'm knocking on doors for the car project. I catch people off guard in a sense, so they're a little more relaxed and they don't really have time to think about how they're standing or posing everything gets done in probably 30 minutes or less. With something like this, I'm reaching out beforehand, we're emailing, we're texting, and I, I'm i working for a major publication. So these people know that they might be in a paper online and seen in front of a lot of people. So that might put them on guard a little bit, make them a little more reserved. And you'll see with a lot of these portraits that it kind of comes off that way and it probably has something to do with the process large format as well but i would like to improve on that in the future but this one this photo in the office was a one second exposure since i was using portrait 160 and i do like this photo even though she is kind of giving the deer in the headlights type look but it's not so much where it's like you're wondering that when you're looking at it. It's just a very basic environmental portrait that I like. Then we moved outside and again, it was 95 degrees. It said it felt like 105. So I just got two quick portraits out there and nothing really special about these, even though I do like them. Um, I was just trying to get it done quick so I wouldn't pass out and she wouldn't pass out. Three days later, I got another email for another voice to photograph. And this person was a parent who had a child that went through the clinic. And the special thing about this one was that the son did not want to be identified. So I was going to have to hide his face in some way. And going back to the direction from the editors and such, the photo editor for this was giving me some ideas on what to do for that, which it could be a silhouette, or you could have the person behind a curtain, or you could have them in a reflection where it hides their face. My idea going into it was I was going to have the mom sitting, looking at the camera or off the camera, and the son was going to have his arm on her shoulder. And my first idea was to just shoot it wide open 
have his face in the background and the small depth of field with large format would completely blur him out. But when I got under the dark cloth and looked at that, you could definitely tell who he was. So that wasn't going to work. So essentially I just moved a little bit and I w decided to cut off his face where you could just see like a fourth of his face in the background. But this photo I actually liked a lot. It was probably one of my favorites of the whole assignment. I used a little bit of tilt to get his hand in focus as well as her face. And even though I did use some swing to try to get both of her eyes, I ended up missing focus on her far eye. But overall, the exposure was good. The light was a lot better um, on that specific day. It was at sunset and it just turned out to be a pretty nice portrait. After that, we moved inside for a couple more portraits and I wasn't too fond of these. It goes back to the uh, stiff portraits that I was talking about. Not really as dynamic as the one outside. And you can also see the difference between the digital and film photos that I took. Film, there's just something about it. I continue to go back to it. I love the way that it looks. I love the way that the highlights and the shadows fall. And I'm just drawn to it. So that's why I continue to use it. Even though I'm going to have to take out a loan to continue shooting 4x5. But after that, around a month later, I got another email and it was talking about getting some photos of Children's Hospital. And the only direction that I had for these photos was moody or sunset photos. And the other direction that I had was to just take a photo of the emergency room entrance to Children's Hospital. But we ended up parking in Forest Park and then working our way over to the hospital. And on our walk, I noticed that I could see the actual top of the building with the Children's Hospital logo. And I just wanted to take some photos from the park looking up at the hospital. It just gave this nice little look of the hospital looming over everything. And I wanted to mess around with some flash to illuminate the foreground and then have the hospital in the back. And I like these a lot. It was a lot different from what I usually shoot. And it would have been a lot more difficult to do this on 4x5. So that's one benefit of using a digital camera. It allows you to mess around, experiment with things, and see the result right in front of you just like that. Eventually, we made our way up to the hospital. And I took some photos of the emergency entrance, some of the children's hospital logos, and then eventually made my way back across the street and took this one of the building, and that's what they ended up using in the article. Around three days later on August 8th, I got another email to photograph another parent involved in the story, and I met her at her house in Wentzville, which is around 45 minutes to the west of St. Louis, and this first one that I took, she was a little off-center from the camera and looking a little too far off-camera, which I noticed, but I took it anyway. And then I had her move her body towards the camera. And this is the photo that they ended up using in the article. Probably my favorite from the batch. And then the next two were just a little bit closer, a little more head type, headshot type portraits. And they were just nice light, nice sunset light, nothing too crazy. And I was there for around 30 minutes and I packed up and left. Three days after that, I got one last email talking about another person who was in the story and she too wanted to be anonymous like the son in the other portraits. Now this one, we were supposed to meet at her house and we ended up meeting at a park and this is what led to me not getting the best portrait that I wanted. There was just a lot of stuff going on in the park, a lot of people walking around. Um, people were stopping and looking because I had the 4 by 5 out. It was really hot. <laughs> a lot of these, it was just really hot, and the sun was beaming down on me. It was 95 degrees. I was sweating like crazy. She was sweating. I was just trying to get it done, and I got this photo, and it's not the worst photo in the world. Um, but I just feel like I probably could have done something a little bit more creative, uh, a little bit better in my mind. 
I messed with some silhouettes and it just wasn't really working out, but I was using my digital camera to try to set everything up so I wouldn't have to be under the dark cloth and using the 4x5 as much. But I got these, not the best, not the worst, but I got it nonetheless. Some things that I did well in this, um, my processing was good. I was a little afraid about that part because I've been known to mess up some color film in the past, but everything turned out nicely. Um, I didn't miss focus on anything, which was a positive. Um, everything that I shot turned out tack sharp, which was good to see. And I feel like the portraits were just true to my style and I didn't really shoot them like a New York Times photographer would shoot them or I didn't shoot them like somebody else would. I shot them in my style and the way that I usually do. Some things that I could improve on, like I said in the past, the stiffness in portraits. And I think a lot of that has to do with just the overall subject matter of this story. There was a lot of emotions involved, so I didn't expect people to be at ease with everything. But I definitely think there are things that I could do in the future when I'm taking someone's portrait to try to make them feel at ease and let their guard down a little bit, which I'm going to work on. And the other thing is just matching tones between digital and film. That's a very hard thing for me to do, and I'm always working on that. But when I was editing the film and editing the, the digital, it was just, I was having a hard time matching everything up. And I'm always trying to match digital to film because I like the way that film looks more. And even with the night photos that I took, trying to manipulate them and edit those to match the film photos was very hard. So in the future, I might just pick one and stick with that, even if it might be a little bit harder. Um, instead of using digital at night for the long exposures, maybe use film and that way everything will match up a little bit better. But that was my second assignment. I learned a lot from it. It was definitely more my style, a longer story, multiple months, so I could use the stuff that I usually use. But now that I've done a more photojournalist, photojournalistic type assignment and a longer form assignment, um, that's just nice to have that in my back pocket and learn from that and just grow as a photographer. But I'm looking forward to many more assignments in the future, and hopefully I get one soon. But if you guys have any questions about anything, um, I would be happy to answer them in the comments. And that way, more people can learn and get advice and hopefully improve their photography and maybe just be inspired. So leave a comment down below. Hope you guys are staying cool and healthy out there. I just got done being sick myself, but... Hope you guys are good. Thank you for all the support, and I'll see you in the next one. And lastly, a thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I've used Squarespace for three years now, and it's one of the best investments I've ever made. I am able to easily share my work with their customizable galleries, and I can sell prints and easily get paid with their simple-to-use online shop. I can also use their third-party extensions to even ship those prints if I feel so inclined. If you want to support the channel as well as get a small discount, go to squarespace.com slash and use code Burks for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.